Okay, I, um, <coughs> ring fixators, talking about ring fixators for proximal um, tibia is like, uh, you know, Nutan and Vaida Rehman in the time of Sheila Ki Jawani and B.D. Jalaile. But it is, it is uh, important and really you have to uh, differentiate between modalities of reduction and uh, modalities of fixation and each of these modalities can be interchanged um, with the other one. Already pointed out that this minimally invasive is, uh, but everyone forgets that big stable. I also agree that um, CT scan is uh, important and I tend to use uh, the CT scan to plan which direction the wires and uh, the implants have to go as well as which are the areas which need to be elevated and you actually get more information out of these uh, two-dimensional reformats rather than the nicely colored uh, three-dimensional picture. So where I'm going to put in my uh, primary implants like uh, cancellous screws, etc., and where I'm going to put in the uh, wires. So articular reconstruction, as I just pointed out, is that really uh, the most important thing? Or is it, uh, you know, articular reconstruction, yes, but restoration of alignment also uh, important. So this, this was the, the paper by uh, Rasmussen, etc., which talked about that issue, already spoken about. So for these bicondylar fractures, getting a locked uh, plate is, if, if you can get it, it's a good thing, All, but even then it can um, fail. And if you are not very finely tuned to the principle of locked plating, which is entirely different from the principle of conventional plating, where a conventional plate gets you the reduction and a locked plate maintains the reduction which you have achieved. Uh, there's, there's, there's a sort of important difference between the two there. So you, you obviously have to look at the uh, soft tissues. So two fractures with different soft tissues are uh, not exactly the same. You know, when with good soft tissue, you can do a lot of stuff. With poor soft tissue, it's not so easy. So you can either wait or the Elizarov is uh, one of the options. It's quite non-invasive. <laughs> so the early experience was with relatively simple fractures um, like this with a small um, intra-articular component. You don't see it on the uh, X-ray, but you see it on the uh, CT scan. But there is a significant, uh, you know, diaphyseal and metaphyseal dissociation there, uh, which, biomechanically speaking, would require a uh, bilateral or a bicondylar plating. This can be very well um, easily reduced without any uh, incisions using the Elizera fixator. Patient is weight-bearing as soon as is feasible with this kind of a fracture where there is no articular uh, depression with a good um, function. For intra-articular fractures, of course, the goal is to get it as anatomic um, as possible. Uh, I usually do it with, with the uh, C-arm, but if that's not possible, there is no sort of objection or in fact, it should be opened up and, and uh, brought back into place. So I, I look at these, I'm now sort of talking mainly about these, uh, the, the difficult ones where there is a metaphyseal diaphyseal uh, dissociation, where the intra-articular component as far as possible, you use um, an internal fixation, which is basically screws to get good compression and the dissociation is neutralized by the fixator. So with, with this kind of um, skin and with this kind of uh, soft tissue, this kind of displacement, all these various uh, tricks 
for closed reduction can be used. That's a AO distractor with an Indian screw. With despite this much of um, distraction, this thing has not really budged much. Uh, then you see on the right a combination of uh, this thing, uh, Hohmann retractor being used as a lever as well as a couple of joysticks. Once these things are percutaneously got into place, you can fix that. And this, the, the reason I was sort of trying to make that point about the, uh, about the articular step is that the, there is a certain amount of uh, leeway and therefore you may be able to get away uh, you know, with, with, with a closed approach rather than opening it. But getting at least a good uh, restoration of the, of the uh, articular surface is of course uh, important. It's not my case that you, know, you just go for any, any old articular reconstruction. It has to be reasonably well reduced. But once you have put a couple of screws um, in that which are guided by your uh, CT scan and uh, which are as high as possible so that they provide for any depressed areas, they provide some um, area of support. Then you've got one uh, large proximal fragment which is uh, one piece and one distal fragment which can then be sort of stabilized by a relatively simple frame even early on. Um, these kind of injuries also tend to have a fair bit of you know swelling in the calf etc. So this, this becomes a moot point if you are going to keep them um, in a slab is that with, with such a widely opened fracture surface, does that contribute to a certain extent to the uh, possibility of a compartment or not? All, all the sort of maneuvers and the fixations are through just small incisions which never create a problem, um, whatever the situation with the skin and once this is, by 48 hours this starts um, improving once it is uh, stabilized. That's at the final removal and that's the meniscus we've already covered that. Now this kind of approach <laughs> even for a late presentation uh, where patient has come six weeks down the line, you know, four to six weeks down the line, where you can see obviously that the intraarticular portion is um, deranged um, and there is an issue of alignment as well as shortening. Now here the important thing is to get this uh, well reduced and again if you have a CT scan you know what are the areas uh, which, which are sort of depressed and you can use remote elevation to lift up different portions where you can see that you know this, uh, this area which was pointing down earlier is now up. Again here absolutely you know edge to edge one millimeter of articular uh, perfection may not be required. So you've got a good alignment on the uh, uh, rather a good reconstruction on the AP, a good reconstruction on the uh, lateral. Maybe there is some defects over here but is that really important? That is fixed up and then this entire thing is stabilized or neutralized by uh, an external fixator. Now the same kind of situation to, to deal with uh, a plate would require a fair bit of uh, dissection. You know, This is the sagittal and coronal um, alignment that is at fixator removal. <laughs> you can see there is a good uh, sort of normal valgus uh, orientation and he is a cup, you know, a centimeter and a half short but that can always be remedied at any time without any major uh, incisions or risk of uh, problems. Of course this is also in terms of evidence uh, fixator, the use of fixators is comparable um, to the use of plates. So in, in my book when to ring it is uh, when you have especially difficult situations. I particularly would, would tend to you know any difficult uh, type 5 type 6 fracture is, I, I would use a fixator. 
but I wouldn't object to people uh, using plates as long as that issue of alignment is, is uh, taken care of. What I see a lot of in, in terms of, uh, you know, plates, uh, plates that have been put is invariably these, these things are fixed into virus. And if you really go back and look at uh, your fixations, I'm sure more than 50% of them, you will find that they are in virus relative to the um, other side. So, <coughs> the other role for <laughs> an external fixator is again in, in situations um, like this. This is not exactly an intra-articular fracture, but uh, a sort of uh, metaphyseal diaphyseal dissociation. But this guy came with this skin. He was injured in the morning and he came in the evening with this, this kind of uh, skin. Again, here is, is that sort of question. If you, if you leave it... Um, if you leave it uh, like this in a slab, in a fixator, whatever, but if, if it remains sort of opened out like this in this spiral position, is that going to cause a certain amount of uh, leaking of blood into the soft tissues, etc.? Would that exacerbate the uh, possibility of, increase the possibility of a compartment um, syndrome? So, with this kind of skin, I think it's, it's difficult to do anything else except put on a fixator. Uh, with the fixator, you get a good, you know, hold on the proximal and distal fragments and using particular um, techniques. Now, all of this is sort of not, not basic level uh, fixator work, but this is something that, that can be done if you have the uh, aptitude or if you are used to using the fixator, where in a, rel in a closed fashion, you put the fixator on in that, you know, unreduced position and using this six axis attachment, you can actually gain a closed reduction on table without um, struggling. So that's, that's the AP on the C arm, that's the lateral on the C arm. So you, you can actually sort of derotate it, compress it um, well together and that's his, I think I have his, his uh, final x-rays over there. And again, as I said, um, alignment maintained. These kind of patients now, even, even intra-articular fractures, I think patients would tend to be walking a little quicker, though probably doesn't make too much of a difference you know, whether they are walking at uh, three weeks or six weeks. But with fixators, patients, uh, I allow them weight-bearing by about three to four weeks, um, you know, uh, increasing weight-bearing by three to four weeks. So that's, I think, his, his last one. Thank you.